She's back and fully functional. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. Today we'll be reviewing the premiere of RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 3. Our queens were challenged to serve two looks on the runway today, one representing their hometown and the other representing their favorite thing. And we'll also be spilling and sipping some hot tea. Apparently, a horror had a lot of things to say about Veronica Grain in the press the other day. So we'll be taking a look at exactly what happened there and how all of the Season 2 and 3 UK queens responded. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor about one of my favorite things, Surfshark, an award winning virtual private network. Surfshark can be used to protect your online identity, get better deals when shopping online, and my personal favorite use to watch geo-restricted content on Netflix. For example, this is what the US Netflix looks like when you search for RuPaul's Drag Race. It's blank. But with Surfshark, I can set my location to anywhere in the world and access that country's Netflix library. So with just one click, I'm in Argentina and I have access to all 13 seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. Hi Porkchop! And maybe later, today I'll surf on over to India to catch up on friends. Anything's possible. The other thing I love about Surfshark is they encrypt all of my internet activity so that nobody can track or steal my data. Not even my ISP. And yes, Surfshark works on your iPhone, Android, Mac, and PC with unlimited device login. And best of all, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in just trying it out. And they've partnered with me to bring you an extra <laughs> deal. When you click the link in the description of this video and use code BUSSY at checkout, you'll get Surfshark for 83% off and three extra months for free. Thanks, Surfshark. Now, let's get started. First up, she's best enjoyed with jam and cream. It's Victoria Scone. Firstly, I just have to praise the silhouettes, camp, high drag, and comedy that Victoria brought to RuPaul's Drag Race. Thank you for your service. So, let's see what all that buzz is about. Maybe her daffodil look on the hometown runway, which is a full stop gag. Daffodils are the national flower of Wales and is giving me the only daffodil in the entire universe. She reminds me of like a camp be high drag version of like the Teletubbies baby in the sun, but as a daffodil. This look is absolutely hot. And for her favorite things look, she did afternoon tea. She comes out literally dressed as the like stacked tiered tea table and her wig is the plate handle. She says this whole thing was inspired by Lee Bowery. Mimi I'm first is shaking and I am thirsty. The only thing I thought was a little bit of a missed opportunity with that tea runway, I was like, girl, where are the scones? Your name is Victoria Scones and like those are what you eat with tea, right? But maybe she just didn't want to be too on the nose? I don't know, but she's already 10 sips ahead of the competition anyway. This look is hot. I truly don't know how she's going to top these runways going into the next couple of episodes because she started off with a bang. Next up, meow, it's Katie Scott Claus. Her hometown is Birmingham and she is representing the Cadbury Chocolate Bar. I think specifically a bar called Dairy Milk. And I'm glad that I saw this reference because I had no idea what I was looking at it first. This look though, is it a bad one? No. But does it wet my whistle? Does it make me want to wake up in the morning? Am I craving more chocolate? Also no. So I think I've got to give it a rot. And for her My Favorite Things runway, she chose to do ABBA. You know, the group behind Dancing Queen. This look again just kind of left me going, is that all? Because like our first one, is it a bad look? No, she looks really cute. This would be great for a club doing some ABBA numbers. But on the RuPaul's Drag Race runway, when you stack these looks up against what some of these other queens did tonight, girl, I'm not feeling 17. I'm feeling too old for this bullshit. This look is a rat. But I'm also not gonna move on from her without giving her some praise for that entrance look, which was totally adorable. Very like Elle Woods up in the courthouse dressed in all pink. I think she's somebody that is going to be shining in the personality department because in the confessional, she was giving some good head. Next up, it's 4.45 a.m. and I've had one hell of a day. How about you? Her hometown is Dagenham and she's representing a 1968 women's strike against the Ford Motor Company. Yeah, the one that makes cars for equal pay. I think it was really smart of Ella to put exactly what her look was on her protest sign because I could have seen a lot of people and possibly even the judges scratching their head at that because the look itself is really just like everyday look inspired by the 60s fashion. But make it blonde bombshell with an ass for days. Come on, herstory, this look is <laughs> And for her favorite things runway, she is giving us pride, flag, realness. I like that this kind of has like a Wonder Woman superhero-esque vibe to it. And most importantly, I really love that she switched up her silhouette completely here, clearly making this one the cherry on top of what she was doing on the runway tonight. This look is hot. Next up, 
Anubis, giving us the curse of Brighton. You'll remember that last season Joe Black was infamously eliminated for his Brighton look, which we don't need to get into it, but the judges were wrong for that. Anubis's look though, fierce. She's dressed as the Helter Skelter from the Brighton Pier, which is this like giant lighthouse looking carnival slide type contraption. Slide on in, I think I will. I love the on-trend oversized sleeves, which really do make sense with this runway considering what this is. This looks a true serve and I think it is hot. But concerning her favorite things runway, I was honestly gagged that the judges didn't like this look at first. I kind of love it. The gown is very pretty. I think it's kind of difficult to serve a copper sequins gown like that. On top of the fact that her wig is literally like two feet tall. But then as I was collecting all my notes from this episode, I was like, wait, what was her theme for this runway? And then I was like, sea creatures. And then I looked at the outfit again and I was like, girl, what kind of sea creature is this? I think she maybe was going for some kind of squid vibe, but at the end of the day, the judges were right. She did just kind of throw a fishing net on top of a pretty gown. So this was not a bad look, but considering the theme that she gave herself, it was very low effort. So I'm going to give it a rat. However, I kind of think her hometown look should have been enough to save her from the bottom tonight. But let me know what y'all are thinking about that down in the comments below. Next up, River Medway. She is dressed as this statue of somebody named Thomas Waghorn. <laughs> And the statue is apparently always adorned with traffic cones on his head and his arm where he's pointing. River's giving us camp, she's giving us drag, she's giving us performance, and most importantly, she's making RuPaul laugh. Literally the number one key to success in RuPaul's Drag Race. Like if you can make RuPaul laugh, she will make sure you're the first person out of the burning building every single time. I think just for the performance, I'm gonna give this look a <sighs> but I also definitely wanna give her some recognition for the traffic cone on her head being made out of hair. I mean, cone on already, but girl, Let's talk about that My Favorite Things runway. Music, you could literally choose anything and you choose the broadest category that you could take in one million different ways and you leave it at the surface level interpretation of that word. Whatever this is, I'm not gagging. This is a rat. Next up, my two favorite things, Crystal Versace. Firstly, ma'am, this makeup, can you teach me? what's going on there. There's witchcraft at play. I don't know what's happening. It's amazing. Like I will not only sell my soul to the devil, but also him off to get some of that talent. Her hometown is Kent and she is dressed like the Gardens of England. Garden of Eve's earthly kid sister, of course. This look I definitely like, but I didn't quite get gardens from this. Like I had no idea that she was literally supposed to be like castle walled gardens. It's more just kind of like high fashion grapevines than anything else. It kind of looks like maybe she's just supposed to be an extra on a TV set with that green screen suit on. Like she's literally standing in the background, disappears. She's literally giving me ginger when she's trying to blend in with the wall and like spy on the other teams from All Star 6. But she looks damn good doing it. So I've got to give this look a hat. For her thing, she chose cats. Well, I was watching this episode, I was so distraught by River's music runway thing when this came up that I could not even process what I was looking at. But this look is fierce with a capital F. The body, the silhouette, the look as a whole complete package. She's leaving me with cat scratch fever. I think this look is hot. I will say the only thing I would change here is the shoe. I think it would have been really easy to just extend the pattern of the pant and top down to like a boot cover to really solidify this look. Next up, something wicked this way comes. It's Veronica Green. Before I talk about her runway looks and drama, I have to give praise to her entrance look. The green skin is dedication. And if you watch closely in her confessional, you can literally see that she's got the green paint stained around her fingernails. Like girl, she did the damn thing. But her main two runways left me with more questions than answers. Her hometown look is representing the cotton mills from Rochdale. And like, do I see the cotton? Yes. Do I want to pick it? No. I think her dress is supposed to be like the stem of the cotton plant. And it's not a bad silhouette at all, but why does she look like Mickey Mouse if he was sitting in a cotton field? Like she even painted on like whiskers onto her cheeks. I just don't know why she went in that direction. And unfortunately there's just something about the texture of raw cotton or whatever she used to look like cotton that makes this look appear very unfinished. I think had she just created an entire dress out of the white cotton, this might've sold me a little bit better, but as is, it is a rat. And as for her, my favorite things look. Miss Ma'am, Miss 
Ma'am, Veronica had I think the same problem that River had on the runway tonight. She chose a really general category for her favorite thing and then stayed at the surface level. Like why are we wearing an 80s ski suit outfit and trying to pass it off as some sort of cyberpunk fantasy while holding an N64 controller? Like this favorite thing could have been so sickening had she dressed like Laura Croft, a Mortal Kombat character. Any number of iconic Boobalicious video game characters would have been sickening as hell. But instead we got this and I'm like girl what in gay hell is going on here? This is a Honestly, I think she should have swapped this runway with her entrance look and made her favorite thing theater, right? And concerning her drama with Ahura, let's look at that tea, the spillage, the sippage of it all. So all of this started at what appears to be a Drag Race UK viewing party when Ahura was asked to SMK, snog, marry, K-word, her season two sisters. She says she'd marry Bimini for the money, snog asked Cena Mandela, and this is what she said about Veronica Green. And I would. <laughs> Veronica mean, because why? Because she's shit. <laughs> she's annoying, she's a little <laughs> backstage also. So Veronica has yet to make a public statement regarding this at the time I'm recording this video, but her season two and three sisters did chime in in her defense. Can confirm Veronica is bloody lovely, wrote Tia Coffee, And Joe Black confirmed Veronica is an absolute babe. Therese May said, I couldn't be prouder and happier to have Veronica on our season. So blessed I can call her my sister. So sweet and bloody talented. And then even the current reigning queen in the UK, Miss Lawrence Cheney herself had something to say. I'm only going to share my experience Experience, but Veronica has always been lovely. I remember when I was down about the Rusical, she came up to me and said, you're going to be in the top and this is a one week thing. You'll bounce back, heart of gold. She did add though, the most you can say about her is she takes effing ages to get ready and required help getting into outfits, but so do other queens. Sisters supporting sisters, we love to see it on this channel. The backlash actually got so bad for Ahura that she decided to issue an apology on September 27th saying, speaking on the video that surfaced from a show between me and Tace many months back. I want to apologize publicly to Veronica. My priority before this statement after seeing the video was to apologize to Veronica myself directly firsthand. In that situation on the video, we were asked to play a game of snog, marry, avoid, which is something we were asked to do at the mid slash end of our shows, each time being different answers and different people. It's lighthearted and a time for us to read our sisters, give gossip, or tease the crowd. Nothing in which I said was meant in malice, harm, or to try and damage someone's character. She is a good person and doesn't deserve to hear those kind of comments even in jest. And for this, I am deeply sorry, Ahura. But let me know what you're thinking about all of this down below. Personally, I think it's pretty fierce that Veronica hasn't said anything about this because I think seeing so many of her peers immediately jump to her defense is really all I need to know about the situation. Next up, Scarlet Harlot from East London. She is representing the Pearly Kings in Queens, a group of working class people in London that literally decorated their outfits with pearl buttons. Wikipedia traces these pearly groups back to the 1860s, the first one being Henry Croft, who by the way is serving a look and it seems like their main goal of dressing up in these really flashy outfits was to use that attention they garnered to then raise money for charity. And yes, the pearlies apparently do still exist today. Overall, she is giving me Hunger Games and also teaching me her story, so I am living for this. Mr. Old Henry Croft from back in the day might have outdone this look, but Scarlet, this is hot. I love learning. And concerning her favorite thing, music. Again, officially making this the third music related runway we've seen tonight. Is this look cute? Yes, but it's not making me sing. It's very 80s Barbie. And the second I saw those poofy sleeves on the shoulders, I was like, oh, Michelle and Rue are going to live for this because why they love reliving their heydays. So whether she intended to or not, I think it was really smart of her to play to the judge's taste. I think the wire around her body is innovative, but conceptually speaking, I think this look does leave a little bit to be desired. So I'm gonna leave this at a warming up. So Scarlett really intrigues me as a competitor in this competition because she feels very green, but has this innate star power I see every time she opens her mouth. Like she just really lights up. Plus she has all the acting experience she'll need for those challenges. That was her in Home Alone, right? Next up, Electra Fence, who is apparently literally named after getting shocked by an electric fence. Her hometown is Burnley and she is paying homage to the Pit Brow Girls, not to be confused with the Pit Crew Girls. These were women who worked at like the top levels of coal mines 
sifting the coal that was mined from the rocks for like precious gems. And I was kind of gagged that the judges read her for this look because I love the silhouette. I think overall her concept was executed well and it was educational. Like she looks sexy as hell with that pickaxe. Am I wrong? Am I crazy? Electra, why don't you come around and check my coal for diamonds sometime? Oh, <laughs> this look is hot. As for her my favorite things, runway. <laughs> This was certainly not one of my favorite things tonight. It's birthday, which I will say is very unique on the runway. It looks very different and stands out, but not in a good way. I think she made this outfit by covering that base dress in E6000 glue, tossing it into a daycare, and then coming back at the end of the week to pick it up. It's just a little too sweet. This look is definitely a rat, but shout out to the suggestive blue glitter around her mouth. Maybe she was kissing sister's sister backstage or something else. Next up, Vanity Milan. I'm gonna call out her entrance look right now because bam, the rainbow feathers. She looks stunning every single time she is on the screen tonight. Her hometown is South London, and she is representing her Jamaican community that she grew up in. On Instagram, she wrote, It's loud, it's green, and full of culture. I'm representing my Jamaican heritage while serving curry goat and rice body bad gal realness. It's a solid A plus look. I love the big giant tool coat revealing to the Jamaican flag dress and the hair. Stunning. And I think she really was the only one tonight to give us a two-in-one fantasy. This look is hot. And for the My Favorite Things runway, she is representing the swallow, a bird that is native to Estonia. In her confessional for this, she was like, I'm dressed as the swallow, and yes, I do. This look is intriguing. It has so many different textures and layers. I didn't really know what was going on at first, but I liked it, and the more I looked at it, I was like, oh, I love that little detail with the harness. The sleeves that look like feathers. The carefully placed colors. Vanity, this look is hot. Next up, Theresa May. She's representing Newcastle in this black and white gown with, oh my god, literally every type of fabric and feather and lace, and it's so crazy, but gorgeous. And I really love that she was even giving us a little ASMR fantasy tapping those extra long nails on the stone soccer ball purse. The funny thing, and all of my ignorance about sports, I thought she was dressed as a referee. And then as I was doing research, I realized that apparently referees wear like solid pink, yellow, blue, and black shirts now, which shattered my whole world because a little bit I thought I knew about sports was apparently not even true. She's actually dressed in the colors of the Magpies, the football team from Newcastle. But even though I know nothing about sports, I do know that this look is a goal! And her My Favorite Things runway is Definitely a standout for me. I love the Picasso reference there. Do you see how she chose a category that was very broad, but then narrowed it in on a specific reference? The only thing I think that she could have done better here was to actually Picasso-fy her makeup, but given that she was serving two looks on the runway tonight, she probably didn't really have time to do that. But an excellent reference and stunning look nonetheless. This look is hot. And finally, let's do some good. It's Charity Case. Her hometown is Lancashire, and she... <laughs> What was that accent? And she is dressed as the flower from that city. <laughs> Y'all don't come for me. I loved seeing this interpretation because last season we got to see Veronica's interpretation of the rose situation in that beautiful red ball gown that she wore for this exact runway. This look from Charity though is giving me rose if it came alive in a demented hellfire landscape. She is the ASMR sleep paralysis demon of the rose garden. This look is a gag. I love horror. I love drama. I love artistry. She says she made this from head to toe and I am head to toe impressed. This for me was the most visually interesting look on the runway tonight. And I think it's really awesome that Drag Race is finally doing things like recognizing women doing drag and people that are doing what many people would refer to as alternative drag. Roses are red, violets are blue, and charity case, this look is hot. For her My Favorite Things runway, she chose freak shows and she certainly let her freak flag fly among other things. <laughs> I was literally sitting there waiting for RuPaul and Michelle to bring up the situation, but they didn't. And I was kind of like, ah, oh, maybe Drag Race has changed. Again, really nice to see something super fresh, demented, insane on the runway. She is the Jackbox. She's carrying a Jackbox and she's got this insane hair thing going on. Very cool stuff. Charity, this is 
Charity's creativity is unquestionably out of the box, but anyone want to take bets on how many episodes it'll take for Michelle to ask her to see some versatility? I'll put money on two. And for this premiere, we've got a little bit of a twist. There are two lip syncs, one for the win and one for their lives. And if you want to catch my reaction to the whole episode, including these two lip syncs, that is available on my Patreon as an exclusive video at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, exclusive videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. Click the link in the description of the video to join today. See you there. Concerning the lip sync for the win, I rarely watch a lip sync and I'm like, oh, they should both win, but this was one of that moments. It was really fun to see that Crystal wasn't just a fashion girl, but she could also turn out some sickening stunts on the stage. And good to know that Victoria's more versatile than elaborate costumes, and comedy, and camp, and high drag. She's amazing. I'll give hots to both of them and was happy with the outcome. And concerning our bottom two, Electra Fence versus Anubis. Girl, Electra shocked me in this lip sync. I was shook, shaking. I'm still shaking. I'm still gagging. Betty Spaghetti is shaking. Gumby found dead. <gasps> the way that she jumped onto like the sides of her legs. Girl, oof, those knees. Mine would be literally cracking and breaking in half. If I were in this competition, I would be terrified to end up in the bottom with her because there's no way in hell I could beat that. So she deservedly wins that and Anubis sashays away. Overall, I was happy with the outcome of this episode, but I do have to say, I kind of think Veronica Green was over looked for a bottom placement here. Because while I am super excited to see her, neither of these looks did a single thing for me. While the three contestants the judges did choose for the bottom all had at least one look that I liked. And concerning the top two, I think Veronica and Crystal were excellent choices. Other contenders I think for these spots tonight were Charity, Teresa, and Vanity Milan. But let me know what you're thinking about this episode down in the comments below. Did the right queens win and sashay away? And who would your tops and bottoms have been? And lastly, I'll let you know my hottest hot in the hometown runway goes to Charity case. And I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hometown looks. They chose Victoria Scone. My hottest favorite things runway goes to Crystal Versace. And my patrons also voted here for Crystal Versace. And I want to give a huge thanks to you for watching this video. Today's video sponsor, Surfshark. And an extra special thanks to one of my patrons, Ailey, who helped me with all of the references for the hometown runways. And I want to give special shout outs to Jessica Mittenmore, Michael Pierre, Alex Rocky, and Charles B, who've just joined my Patreon at the tier. And 63D Bo, Lizzie, and Ida Sam Janjwa, who've just joined my Patreon at the hottest hot tier. And Lark, Aliel, Angel, Adaluda, Cyrus, Felicia, Jared Rox, JB, Joseph, Josh, JPN, Dallas, Laura, Matthew, Maxi Wow, Miss F, Neely, Robert Reeves, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Stephen, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, Topher A, Triton, and who were all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.